And now for more on this, we are being joined by Jen Krishna, Chief Executive Officer, Foundation for Advancing Science and Technology and former CEO of the UK-India Business Council live from Delhi. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, sir. A pleasure. Now, to begin with, beyond the protest, data reveals a nuanced picture of MSP across states. So what's your initial take on the regional disparities in MSP implementation? Yeah, so actually, I think let's understand, uh, you know, uh, MSP primarily benefits uh, medium and large uh, farmers, you know. But in our country, almost 86% of the farmers are small and marginal farmers. They they do not get benefited to that extent uh, by MSP. And when you talk about regional disparity, uh, let's compare two states, uh, Punjab and Bihar, you know. Mm -hmm. In Punjab, for example, 82% of all uh, paddy farmers uh, sell uh, their paddy uh, crop to, uh, you know, uh, through the public procurement agencies, PPAs as they are called, and 68% of all farmers sell it at a price above MSP, you know. So this is the, you know, the states which are, which are doing well in agriculture, that is the situation uh, there. Mm -hmm. Look at Bihar. Uh, for example, only 8% of the farmers uh, sell their produce to uh, uh, PPAs, which are the public procurement agencies. And as much as high as 83% of them, they, they uh, sell it uh, at, at a level below MSP, you know. In the east northeastern states, the situation is even worse than Bihar, you know. So there's a huge amount of regional, dis, uh, you know, disparity. And, 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 and therefore, uh, one doesn't really know how to address it, how to have a uniform MSP uh, for all crops. It is, it is not easy at all, because uh, even if, if you look at the MS Swaminathan Committee report, it talked about 1.5 times the, the cost of production should be the MSP. Farmers are also demanding 50% uh, profit over uh, uh, cost of production. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge uh, challenge that how, how does the government address this? Uh, you know, uh, when, when there are huge uh, regional and statewide uh, variations in, in the way, uh, you know, MSP is availed of by the farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for that comparative analysis, sir. Now, that being said, the government selling crops at a loss, that of course raises questions about MSP's economic viability. Are there alternative approaches to support farmer income without burdening consumers? I would believe so. Uh, you know, one simple reason is that uh, uh, MSP actually distorts, while it is surely it helps uh, uh, lots of farmers. But if you look at the overall economy, it distorts the you know market forces. It disregards the demand supply uh, situation. Uh, it leads to overproduction uh, because of the comfort of uh, selling everything at the you know. Uh, comfort the farmers get uh, for selling uh, products at MSP and and sometimes it may also le lead to shortages of some other crops you know so I think uh, even if you look at the uh, the way uh, government uh, pro or their agencies they procure and distribute their inefficiency there and uh, also it leads to inequitable distribution of uh, farmer wealth as I said earlier uh, the big farmers benefit more small and marginal ones do not get that kind of a, ben uh, a benefit and also the budgetary burden on, on government becomes huge if MSP is to be extended to all crops what farmers you know have been demanding. So as uh, regards your question that is there an alternative? I would believe so. You know, a more market-led mechanism is is better rather than all uh, uh, procurement for all crops to happen through MSP by the government and PPA. Uh, you know, uh, I, I fundamentally believe, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the, the uh, 2020 bills which were introduced by government of India, you know, the Farmers Produce Trade uh, and Commerce Promotion and Facilitation Act was one. The Farmers uh, Empowerment and Protection Agreement on Price Assurance and Farm Subsidies Act was second one. And the Essential Services uh, Act, which uh, the amendment one, which was uh, promised, which was brought uh, and even passed by the parliament in the in the year 2020. And finally, the, those acts had to be repealed. I think I, I fundamentally believe in, in, in a mode of, uh, you know, uh, a proactive communication and dialogue with the farmers. You know, one could try to bring those acts uh, back uh, because okay. for, fundamentally, you know, that was a more a market led kind of an intervention uh, for, uh, you know, as a substitute to MSP and so on and so forth. I, I would believe mm -hmm. that although there was a lot of uh, uh, you know, it, it was done in a, co in a in the COVID times, not with the best of consultation with the farmers. I, I believe, you know, in a, in a spirit of partnership, the government and farmers should talk, and uh, because those are market led mm -hmm. mechanisms which will do a lot of good to farmers eventually. All right, well, Mr. Jan Krishna, thank you so much for joining us on a World Business Watch with your insights on this.
Thank you. For latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.